Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the MSNS Podcast. I am your host, Ryan Lim. And I'm Toby Lin. Yes. Um, so this is a weird thing to say that he is our very special guest because usually, you know, if you've been here before, he was the co-host and the, you know, alumni chair before I was. And, you know, he's back for another session of the podcast. And I really appreciate it. Welcome, Toby. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me back. We've gone, we've gone full circle now. I know, it's kind of crazy. So, how have you been, though, since the last time you've been on the podcast, the last time I've seen you? You know, you've already graduated, you got your NCLEX done, you got your license. How has that post-grad life been for you? Busier than I thought it would be. I think everyone kind of uh, paints the post-grad life to be, you know, sunshine and roses and beaches and all of that. And um, I think the reality hits a little bit different. Um, it's definitely different for each person. I have friends who have, you know, graduated and then they've gone on to very quickly within even just a month or so of getting their NCLEX, gotten job offers. Some even actually got offers as early as I think March or April wow. before we even graduated. So, you know, everyone's on their own sort of path. Um, and for me personally, it's been a little bit draining physically and, and mentally just because there's a lot going on, um, job applications, um, work and, and stuff. But, you know, it's, it's just a different, it's just a different beast. And I think that if I were to, you know, give some insight to people who are kind of getting ready to go on go on that journey is just be prepared for the unexpected mm -hmm. and do it do things at your own pace because trying to keep up with other people and to do what they do especially when it goes against what your goals are i think uh can be very difficult mm -hmm. and how has that job hunt been for you like, I know you, you know, you got your job recently and we'll talk about that a little bit later on, but I want to get to, uh, I guess, help myself and the viewers understand like what it's been like for you since you graduated, since the summer, like how has that whole thing been? Like, have you been going to interviews? Like, how have you been, you know, kind of continuously developing your resume, stuff like that? Yeah, I think it's just an ongoing process um, and there's no real one formula for how how to get it done i've seen people who were very ambitious you know the people who are like you have to do at least 10 job applications a day and apply to this place and that place which you know if you're applying to a lot of places um chances are you're working on your resume a decent amount you're getting comfortable with writing cover letters you may be able to crank it out but it's also a lot right you're just yeah. just judging by your um reaction <laughs> um to oh that. yeah because i have it's, no idea so that's like a it, lot yeah to it's, it, it's a lot you know it's a, and like some of these applications are long they have like 10 plus supplemental questions and these aren't you know simple what's your name how are you doing it's like if you were it you know what's a difficult patient situation that you were in how did you manage that what did you learn how would you approach it what's the time you made a mistake you know would you change anything now like these are you know a lot of times you have to really dig deep and think back to your other clinical rotations to find these and so i have a lot of people who when we're going through these applications they're like i can't remember a time that you know this this happened and you really really have to to think about that so i think you know knowing that now um i think that honestly can help a lot of uh freshman one to sophomore one and two, yeah. especially as you're starting, you know, to really pay attention to the things that happen in your clinical rotations, because when it comes to job interviews, a lot of hospitals ask about, and, and not just hospitals, you know, this goes for any job, they'll ask you about a time that you had to think critically, mm -hmm. you know, a time that you provided good, you know, customer service is really what it comes down to, you know, good patient care, good customer service, however they word it. Um, a time that you had to work within a team, a time things didn't go well. And, you know, the, the questions will be phrased differently for each institution, but more or less they're relatively similar 
Um, and then, of course, you know, the big question of why nursing? Why did you go into nursing? Tell us about yourself. You know, having these kind of answers really well prepared um, helps a lot. And, you know, for me personally, like my job hunt, I think I wasn't as aggressive as some of my peers. But that's also because for me, I, I think meant it, it was it was a lot to be like, oh, I'm going to try and force myself to do like five, even five applications a day was a lot for me, mm -hmm. um, especially because I was uh, doing um, pretty much working full time on the side as well. Um, and so from, you know, learn, picking up the new, new job um, prior to my current job um, and then trying to do job apps at the same time and just sitting in front of a screen all day. That was that was a lot for me. So I went at my own yeah. pace. Um, but I think that one thing I've learned to be very important is to not sell yourself short. There were some moments where you know, I got into a situation where there was the potential to jump into a, a nursing job. And the more I jumped into it, you know, it, w it just was it didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there's there's each person needs to really do their own thing, I think. So there's, you know, there's always a job offer out there. Is it the right one for you is the, is the real question. You, know, you can go to the middle of, of nowhere where they really need nurses. And if that's the right fit for you, great. But there's also some situations that might not be ideal for a young budding nurse, especially if it's, you know, a long contract in, a, in an environment that maybe isn't the best for you maybe it's good for someone else but for you you know it might actually break your career and break your passion for for nursing and this is you know from you know you have, you have to do your research on what is the feedback of people who started off or have gone through this hospital what's the turnover rate um talking when you interview really talking to the managers and getting a feel do they have strong leadership or is there you know some hospitals does their leadership, you know, tend to come and go, you know, do they burn through their managers? Do they burn through their um, supervisors, chart nurses, um, CEOs, CFO, wh whoever it is, um, mm -hmm. really doing your due diligence for that, I think is, is important. And so for me, like, in, in this process, I think there were a lot of situations where I was like, well, maybe I'll do that. And then as I do more research, I'm like, okay, this is not really the right fit for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to keep looking that's a i feel like that's such a hard thing to recognize for yourself especially out of a you know out just graduating i feel like you know it's all we always say that we don't want to compare ourselves to others or you know see you know where we stand compared to others but it's hard especially if all your friends are in nursing and you see that they're grinding super hard they're doing those applications so what was it what like how did you get to that mindset where you know because i feel like putting myself in that perspective, I feel like I would be scrambling to do all those yeah. applications. All the, like, so what, why, like, why did you personally choose to slow things down and kind of really make sure you're picking the right thing for you? Yeah. I think that really comes down to my experience with other people. Um, I'm much better at helping read other people's situations than my own. And so from helping uh, my fellow peers with their, you know, processes, their job application, their things, it was much easier for me to hone in on, okay, hey, let's slow down a bit. What are your goals? Where are you looking to head? If, the, you know, if PEDS is your goal, why are you spending time looking at, you know, agencies that are trying to put you in adult med search? There's PEDS opportunities for you out there if you really choose to, um, you know, so, th so, you know, examples like that, or people who are really, you know, gunning for ICU and it's like, why are you trying to go into, you know, uh, a telly step down? Like that's not your passion. And if you, if you go there, yeah, you could learn a lot, but you know, maybe you actually end up hating your job and just talking to a lot of experienced nurses too, you know, staying in contact with um, my professors from USF, I think was a huge, huge resource for me, uh, especially, you know, Dr. Hurley, Dr. Denali. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and a few other of my other professors, um, Dr. Taylor, like just talking to them, having, you know, whenever I came up with the question, hey, I'm not really sure how I, you know, how I want to approach this and, you know, giving them 
that situation and they're not necessarily saying you should do this but just giving more insights oh, um, yeah. putting their experience there and so i think that slowing my own process down was really putting my money where my mouth is at you know i can't be telling people to take a chill pill um and to reevaluate their situation if i'm not doing the same for myself right and so mm -hmm. from right after graduation people are starting to scramble They're like oh my gosh all of these um all these new grad positions are opening and they're like planning out and it's like that's not really where that's not really what worked for me so for some people that was you know they that was what gave them security you know having a schedule of all right here's these applications that are due on this date i have a calendar i know which like i'll fill it out and i you know that works for those people great mm -hmm. for me it, it was just anxiety inducing like i mm -hmm. i want to you know if i'm going to do an app i'll focus on this one get this one done you know really refine it and put that time into it and then move on to the next one and if there's two i'll prioritize the one that was more meaningful to me mm -hmm. um and yeah, I mean, it's like, I think the biggest thing was graduation, you know, Hesse was over, thankfully, then so then <laughs> graduation, and then it was like, and you're muted. Yeah. yeah um, right. NCLEX was like the biggest um, beast that, that came up oh, yeah. next, you know, mm -hmm. if, if you, and that's the thing is like, if you get a really great job offer, but you don't pass that NCLEX, you don't get that job offer. So for me, in my eyes, especially with how Hesse went, you know, having to take it three times, um, in my experience, I was like, if I have to take the NCLEX like three times, you, yeah. you have to, there's a waiting period between each um, time you take the NCLEX. So I want to be able to get that done and focus on that before I even think about these job applications, because then I'm not really mentally thinking about the job applications. And that's kind of what I've been telling people as as well of course you know they're free to do what they want but in my opinion i think that if you have nplex looming over you you're not really going to put the best effort into your applications anyways yeah and one thing i wanted to backtrack on was like um was that it sounds like for you specifically when you're trying when you were trying to find your new grad opportunities and jobs it was really important that you found something that really fit for you and that you truly wanted like you truly didn't feel like you had to settle there were potential things out there that you wanted yeah. but what are your thoughts on the opposing argument because this is something that i've heard from other nurses other alumni where um their dream was to go into icu or their dream was to go into a specific thing but um they started off in med search and worked their way up like what do you think of that like it's some some like some i guess mm -hmm. somewhat settling for something lower to get that experience and then move up like what do you think about that yeah. i mean i wouldn't necessarily call it settling for something lower um i think my point with this is to pick what's what's right for you um and what i mean by that is you know we we hear it all the time right some someone really wants to go into let's just say NICU, and okay. they land themselves a position in you know med search tally step down and they end up loving it and they spend their whole career doing that right i mean when we did the podcast with dr hurley you know he had no he hated peds yeah. didn't want to do peds and now he's now he's you know a peds instructor and he's been doing peds for you know for a good portion of his career so i think that the flexibility of being open is definitely very important but um i think that trusting your gut feeling is is the key to this one mm -hmm. um you know he you know he like he was open in his career to to try and check that out um, and it's not to say that, oh, everyone has to do med surge or everyone shouldn't do med surge. It's if med surge really is not where your heart is at, then why are you aggressively pursuing that? If, you know, because, and I think, I think the, the other thing too is, you know, money, like money really will follow. Um, the it's, it's not realistic to be aiming for only, you know, the, 50 60 70 dollar an hour bay area nursing job that's pretty much you're you're pretty much only going to find that here as a new grad right um good luck finding it elsewhere <laughs> um and so being being realistic about your situation you know new grads 
typically make anywhere from 20 something to, to the to 30 something an hour um, in most places most states that's kind of the general reality if you can find higher great but also it, I think it's more important that you protect you know yourself mentally physically emotionally and you know bending over backwards because oh the job the job pays well but what you know do you end up burning out after you finish your year contract or if it's not contracted do you just quit after six months and now you're lost and you've lost you know your your passion for nursing to begin with and so i think that um the people the people that i've seen that have really found the good fit for them regardless of you know the pay is the the, the last thing for them as long as they're able to make it work you know that's important. yeah oh yeah um, there's a lot there's a lot of you know not great um contracts out there that you know yeah you can the you know the pay might be decent but it's like the the contract where you get looped into all that um is not is not the best and so you know i i see a lot of happy new grads um right now who aren't necessarily at the highest paying job for what they're doing but they're getting that good experience and enjoying themselves um yeah. i haven't necessarily seen a disgruntled new grad yet but it's still early so that might yeah. that might come right but you know we, we see it all the time in hospitals and clinicals right you, you there's nurses that are really not as passionate about what they do anymore maybe they were at one point but somewhere along the line they they started to get burned out and that's you know the last thing you need as someone who's just starting out especially with you know the current climate of of events um coming out of school and maybe you didn't get as much clinical experience as you would have liked and so maybe there's a little bit of a gap in that as well so i think that finding you know and that, that was the toughest thing for me too like there were certain opportunities that were like man you know this would really be a good opportunity but my heart wasn't in it and so i went with mm -hmm. something that my heart was more attached to um and you know so far so good um but there there are definitely tough calls like i've had friends who had you know their turned down you know interviews from their dream hospital because they had taken an offer but you know it was a good offer so they like they, they went with that um so that's just how it happens you know so these things move kind of fast sometimes you only have you know 24 48 hours to give a, a response because you have an offer and if you don't say anything they're just going to move on to the next person yeah um, and so yeah. it's tough and i like how you uh pointed out that when you were um talking about what's the right fit for you it's not necessarily just based off the specialty it's not just because like oh this is icu this is ed this is med surge peds it's like for you it's about the whole setting like specifically the people because i feel like that's the most important part right like beyond just the title of being a med surge nurse or something else it's like oh i'm gonna be working with these people for hours straight for multiple days in the week mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i want to know that i can like actually be with them and trust them if i if i have you know difficulties i need someone to go to yeah, and you you know you really have to understand that as an as a new grad, you're going to be doing a lot of learning. You want a good learning opportunity and oh, yeah. environment. You don't what you the last thing you need is you know a situation that's very hierarchical. You know, new grad kind of gets eaten alive, and you you know you spent so much time, you worked so hard to become a nurse, and you wake up and one day you don't want to be one because of whatever reason and so i think that finding that is is so important like asking and that's what uh, i got from some of my mentors that i would and you know professors from from school that i was asking about you know this whole process and what are things that i should really be looking out for and you know and, and as well as you know current nurses asking them like, you, you know what things do you look out for and that that's a huge thing you know talk to the manager when you talk to the manager what vibe do you get um oh, yeah what are their goals what is their unit culture like what are you know if you ask them what is their ideal nurse you know there's a lot of these questions that really um you don't get from just graduating from from school you know you, they don't teach this in a textbook it's just mm -hmm. from experience because this is this is where those you know people skills really come into play because ultimately when you do an interview or when you go through the 
I guess just to give a little insight into the application process, like to start off, you know, you do the, you answer the, the prompts, right? Whatever questions they have in the, the supplemental questions in the application, you, you know, you do a cover letter, do a cover letter for every single, you know, even if they don't ask for one, always do a cover letter. Um, Cause that's just putting a, almost like putting a face to a name. And then there's your resume. That's the first round. Sometimes they're automated, sometimes they're not. Depends on the hospital, depends on the system. But, you know, if you get an interview, if you get past that first round of applications, you're already a qualified applicant in their eyes. So what does that mean? That means that everyone, they, let's just say that they, you know, they have a thousand applicants and they take a hundred qualified applicants. So in that hundred, every single person in their eyes is a qualified nurse, is someone that they would want to hire. What happens next? You land that interview, um, either it's a panel interview with other applicants or it's just you with a panel of, um, you know, it, it's a, it, either it's a group panel or an individual Or like panel. the hiring managers. And yeah, all and you, yeah, you get the hiring managers, you get HR or whatever, whoever. And so, and then there's likely another stage of, you know, the hiring, whichever hiring managers like to you, you'll get interviews with them. Or sometimes, you know, that first initial interview is already that last interview. But at that point, it really comes down to, you know, who you are, your fit. Because mm -hmm. if you think about it from a, from a management standpoint, they're bringing someone into their unit family, right? They don't want to bring in someone who's going to kind of break up that unit dynamic, someone who's, you know, um, not a team player and all, all, all this and that, and whatever their goals are on their, on their unit, they want someone whose personality is just going to be a great fit, a great addition, right? And so you'll find that, you know, sometimes even if you did great in the interview, maybe you're just not the right fit. And I've definitely mm -hmm. had that where, I'll, where I look back and I'm like, no, I think I did pretty well on the interview. Like we had a good conversation and then it just didn't go past that. Um, it, maybe they found someone who was a better fit or, you know, I just wasn't exactly the, the fit they were looking for. But um, one thing that um, actually David Park, uh, previous MSNS president, um, told me was, you know, you got to understand that it's really not you. like, it's nothing against you. You're already a qualified applicant. If you make it to the interview stage at that point, it's just, did you click with the managers? Did you, do they see you as a good fit? And, or maybe there's just too many and they had to make a tough decision. But like, if you let that knock your confidence, it makes the process very grueling. And I've had friends who were like, man, I'm really close to just like giving it like, I, I want to just give up because this is way too hard and it's, and it sucks because that is a side effect of constant rejection, especially for the people who have turned in like hundreds of applications and they get back like three interviews mm -hmm. and the, if those interviews don't go well. You know. Yeah. I like that you, uh, I like that you mentioned that, that, you know, of course, you know, within nursing school, a lot of the focus is on, you know, getting that experience, not just only in clinical, but sometimes outside of clinical with your extracurriculars. And yes, that adds to your resume. But I like that you mentioned that's just the first round, like that just to get you through the door. What yeah. really matters, like in the end, is really your personality and the way you click. And just, and like how you said, like sometimes it's not your fault, you know, just because you don't mm -hmm. get hired, it's not necessarily because you did something wrong. It's just, Hey, you know, the flow wasn't there. You know, they, they had a specific idea of like who they wanted in mind and you just weren't it. That doesn't mean that you're like bad or like you're not a good nurse or something like that. It just wasn't the right fit. Yeah. And also recognizing like sometimes these units are interviewing like 10 people for one position. Yeah. Like it, sometimes, you know, physically the numbers just aren't in your favor mm -hmm. yeah. and you know, on top of that too, um, you touched on something where, you know, like resume padding, right? Adding things to your resume on paper, sure, it's great. But if you really think about it, you know, why, why do, um, why is it highly recommended or encouraged to pick up some extracurricular activities to be diverse, to have, you know, a unique, um, list of things that you're about it really comes down to what things you gain as a person you know those yeah. skill those interpersonal skills from being in different situations so you know what i found to help me be successful like i've 
like if you look at my resume, you'd probably get really confused because I have a lot of really random odd jobs, but in each like each position that I've taken um, has kind of built upon my previous experience from different situations because you know you see more when you're not all like at least the way I see it is I don't think that there's really one way to go about this you know mm -hmm. how you can do the whole yeah I you know I went through nursing school and on the side I was a PCA or CNA and I did that and then I volunteered and all and everything is geared towards that great but I think there's also a lot of other things that you can see like my um my job uh that i'm about to de depart um in medical device sales like doing that allowed me to see another aspect of healthcare as well um it's not directly related to healthcare but it's like seeing like you know pe people complain all the time right about not having stock in the, in the <laughs> hospital like oh my gosh we're out of gloves or whatever but there's actually like you know there's a lot of reasons for why that could be and there's so many gears in this whole big machine. And it's like to be able to see that uh, on the side of a supplier um, and it's like, oh, so this is how it works or this is what happens. Like why, you know, and that there's a lot of things that are also just out of your control um, that really no, no one can do anything about, um, especially when it comes to like shipments and things like that. So just, I think that um, being a, diverse individual the the more unique you are i think the the better the chance it gives you of of succeeding um especially when it comes to things like tell us about yourself mm -hmm. and if you sound like every other applicant that you know went the whole quick oh i'm all about healthcare. like what's what separates you from the pack because you know, think about it you know having healthcare experience or volunteer experience probably going to be pretty common most everyone went to nursing school clearly um, <laughs> yeah that's, yeah they have assume. a degree they have a degree um you know most people probably have a pretty good you know gpa uh, honors whatever like what separates you from those people and having those unique things um matters more it honestly like more more than in the first round like you think you're doing it for the resume but you're really doing it for yeah. and when you talk to higher managers and maybe like you know who knows like someone was a boy scout and you bond over that because you did boy scouts like and that's not necessarily healthcare related right um so yeah, yeah. and i want to talk about a little bit about um your experience in those interviews Spe specifically one that i feel like i was curious about and something that i'm sure the viewers are the interview you had with stanford for yeah. adult oncology right yeah how yeah. how was that like or and just like in general how were all your interviews like like how did you prepare what was it like the flow and everything what was like how was it i think that was probably my favorite interview to do um not like not really not because it was stanford but um i think because that interview taught me a lot about myself and that's that's the other thing i learned too is the interview process um Kind of makes you realize things about yourself that prior you might not have um i spent a lot of time um with working on that particular application with um some friends um that were also in the same interview process and then i actually ended up doing the interview with someone like they, they, they did panel yeah they did panels of four people um so it was you had it was you and three other you know potential applicants with a panel of the hiring managers and one of the people in my group was was my friend who I had been preparing, you know, for this interview with. Um, and it was just kind of cool to have a you know familiar face and like I'm listening and I'm like, oh yeah, I I heard you know she had um, told me this story before, but then she's you know throwing a little extra twist in it. Um, and that, you know I did the same because when you're you know you, you don't want to be reading off a script and so you've yeah. practiced enough that as you're telling it you know now you're really getting into the story aspect and that was i think that was a huge thing if i was to give anyone any advice like practice 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 yeah especially but, if they give you that ahead of time yeah but was that intimidating though like those group interviews where you're like next to the people i i hate saying that it's like competing but essentially it is like if you're competing for the same no. spot or other different spots or whatever like how is that like do you think there's like more pressure at all um i think 
maybe maybe I might be uh, approaching it a little differently, but the way I see it is if you treat it like a competition and you look at the other people as your competitors rather than your future potential coworkers, I think that you're 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 gonna not do as well because it'll show in your it will show in your voice, your demeanor, if you're trying to, you know, kind of one up the other people. Um, I think being genuine is huge, especially when it comes to video interviews. Like you really like you really can't I mean, maybe, maybe some people can fake it, but I think that, you know, you have so many sets of eyes looking at you because you're the only person talking when it's your turn to talk. Yeah. Everyone's looking at you. All the little things you do are going to be magnified. And so staying genuine to who you are, I think is, is key. Um, and the way I saw it, you know, there's, I think there were like seven or eight hiring managers on that call. Oh. Um, maybe more. I can't exactly remember. Um, it's been a while, but you know they're going to hire who they think is the best fit. And if you really, the way I see it is, you can fake and try and be someone that you're not. But ultimately, if if said hiring manager goes, that's a you know that's what we want, and you're not really that person. Imagine doing your one year residency, yeah. trying to be someone that you're not on a unit that you really don't fit in because, you know, you tried to be someone that isn't true to who you are. That's, I think that's tougher than the interview process. So, you know, for me is like, well, well, in that position, all I, all I was thinking was I'm going to, you know, present the best version of myself. And if that resonates with someone, and they choose to give me a call back and, and just you know talk again great because ultimately skills can be taught personality can't you know yeah. and and at the end of the day you know these hiring managers are looking for really people you know when you mm -hmm. when you're hiring someone to to work with you know, eight 12 hours a day you know three or four five days a week um you know that that adds up and if you're they're not going to hire someone that they're going to be sick of <laughs> yeah and um, plus you bring up that point that just because like if you have that mindset of like competition that's not i don't think that might not get you very far because you being just because you're better than the next person doesn't mean you're going to get the job mm -hmm. if you're not the right fit you can someone yeah. can i guess quote unquote be you know less qualified than you but if the managers feel like hey like these guys this guy is like really really cool he's really nice and all that he's gonna get the job even though they may have been less qualified than you yeah and i think another thing too like to to give more insight into that process in my you know talking to the hiring manager she made it very clear you know she doesn't care if you're the top you know whatever like she's looking for I love that. I love qualities that. In, in people, you know, certain qualities that to her shine out in, in people. And so I think that, you know, you want to show your best qualities, your individuality, because that's what, um, that's what, you know, they, they want to add, they want to, of course, find somewhat similar people, but they also want to see what do you have to bring to the table. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was ecstatic when, when my friend got hired, um, she, worked hard for it um and it's like you know this is someone who you can say is my competition in the interview process but like if you're not happy that you're you know your friend got a job after working so hard i think you have to kind of check yourself a little bit yeah right like you you want you want that for for the unit and so i was happy to even just get a, a second call from the the hiring manager and it was a very wonderful conversation and i learned a lot about um kind of what more of you know because you know stanford obviously has a reputation but to talk to a, a manager on a unit at stanford and to see what she's you know striving for um i think was was great because that's something that not everyone really gets to see and to even just have a conversation and get some idea and insight into the the mind of uh, of a nurse manager um, that's super valuable take, yeah taking notes you know for my myself as well because that's somewhere that I hope to 
to touch in the future is like, okay, if I was a manager, there's a lot of things that she says that, you know, and how her process works. I'm like, yeah, I think that's kind of similar to how I might run things too, if it was up to me. You know, if I was a nurse manager, I would want to hire people as well. Like you can teach skills and all. It really just takes time. Um, you know, like people like to say you can teach a, a monkey to stick an IV in someone. It's kind of true. Um, you know, see, see, I said all the time. You know, you, you this the ta- you know the tactile skills you can teach people, but you really can't teach things like you know genuine caring hearts, um, you know, yeah. kindness, um, a passion, a drive you know, as much as you try to motivate people, they don't have that innate motivation, no amount of external motivation is going to do it. So, you know, with the whole hiring process, it really just screamed, be genuine, be you and you know, the, the right, the right fit will come. And of course, do your research too. You, know? oh, yeah. you don't want to go into an interview and not know anything about the hospital or, or the place you're interviewing or the unit you're interviewing for to have a little insight on that, I think goes a long way, mm-hmm. but yeah. I think what gives you the best chance is to be your, yourself because there's, you know, there's no replacing you. Like if you were interviewing, there's no other Ryan Lynn, right? So <laughs> to be you, if you're what they're looking for, then you'll get hired. If you're not what they're looking for, then you you know, try again. Mm-hmm. Try again. Yes. And what were some of the things that they asked you during the interview? Cause I feel like, you know, um, in order for them to get, you know, you best and allow you to, the opportunity to be genuine they have to ask like very specific questions that allow you to open up in a certain way right yeah i mean mine was my my interview was a little different it wasn't necessarily a structured interview and i kind of like that more because it nice. flows with more of my personality which is why you know i felt pretty good about it because i was like well this is my speed you know this is kind of what i what i vibe with i think um and I was really caught off guard too. Like I was at work and I, all of a sudden I saw the call and I was like six, six, I don't know, it was like a six, five, zero area code. And I was like, that's Stanford. I got to pick this up. Oh, nice. um, <laughs> But, and I was like shaking the whole time and I was super excited to even just get a call back. But um, it, I think like, I mean, I'm not going to say exactly what was asked, yeah. Um, yeah, no but uh, just because, you know, that's that's their process and I don't want to, to ruin that for other people, even though they do give their questions out um, on their, you know, Zoom calls. But, like, um, you know, it was, it was really a lot of just getting to know the unit. I, I learned, like, I was told a lot about what the unit was like. And then um, every now and then just um, ask me, you know, it's kind of like the same thing, you know, tell me about yourself. Um, what are your goals? What are your passion? Um, and and kind of things like that. Uh, and from what I've gathered from uh, other um, people that have done interviews for other places, it's also a lot of personal questions. Some places they'll give you, you know, clinical scenarios and you have to tell them how you would approach it, what you would do. Those are the scary ones. I, you know, I have had a few of those, but they're you know, you just treat it like a, like clinicals or like a sim, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you walk through what are the steps, what things would you do, what things are you considering and all that. That's kind of your test of, are you a, are you a nurse really? <laughs> um, but I think that get, you know, that, that first question, you know, who are you? What are you? Um, tell us about yourself. That one is one that, you know, if you can get that down pat, it'll make things a lot easier. Um, for sure, and you know, that was that was a question we practiced a lot because we knew that was going to be asked in the first round of interviews, um, and that's it's scary. It's hard to to be like, well, this is what I'm about. This is who I am. Mm-hmm. Um, until you really do it a lot, uh, and I think yeah, I, I think like, like I said, you know, the questions really just reflect what they're looking for because the biggest question that almost always gets asked is. You know, who are you? What are you? Yeah. You know, tell us about yourself, which is a super vague question, but that kind of shows you what what these managers are looking for. Mm-hmm. They want to know you. Yeah. And that sounds like when you're prepping for these interviews, that sounds like a lot of introspection on your part. Because it's like it's hard enough like answering that question, who are you to other people? I think the harder question is trying to answer that for yourself, trying to look deep within yourself and truly give an answer that you feel is genuine to, to your beliefs. 
and I'm like, because I yeah, because I feel like I got a little taste of that on the other side when I was intern like uh, interviewing for interns for the alumni yeah. and relation because I was on the opposite end where I was the person interviewing people, and I guess hearing from what you're saying right now in this podcast kind of remind me of that where I wasn't asking about like qualifications like at all or certain things. I was just asking like, Hey, what are your interests? Like, like, um, like how is your dynamic with your friendships? Like I told them straight up, like, I don't give a shit about your qualifications. Like, I just want to know you, I want to know what this flow is. And I, I like that. That's how it is in the real world as well. Yeah. And if you really think about it, no one who's if you're not qualified you're not getting an interview Mm -hmm. hands down unless you somehow miraculously slip through like interviews go to qualified applicants if you get an interview you are a qualified applicant so if that's the case they're not going to care about your resume really when it comes to the interview stage the only questions really that i've gotten so far when it comes to the interview stage that even remotely related to my uh, my resume was just you know, hey, it looks like you have a lot of peds experience on here, and we're an adult unit. You know, that's as mm-hmm. that's as far as it, it came. Mm-hmm. It's just intention, but again, it comes down to who are you, what are you trying to do, right? Like, yeah. so it's not even really a resume question. It's simply, are you only interested in pediatrics, or are you also open to adults? You know, um, and uh, I, you know, that's and a lot of just you know what, why us? You know, why do you want to? come to our hospital our network why do you want to join our unit our family mm-hmm. you know what what are you looking to do it's kind of just like vetting putting people through the ringer like to really see are you truly who you say you are um, mm-hmm. and so because of that i think that it's important for people especially as you're you know early on in your nursing career um in school you know before you even do well, like real nursing um, finding that out. And of course, I don't, you know, I don't know everything. I, I literally just started, but that's as far, you know, that's so far what I've learned from, from this process is just people want uh, genuine, genuinity. They, they really want to find that um, real connection with, with people that they're hiring or considering hiring. And you know, that's what you have to bring to the table. Mm-hmm. And was that um okay sorry i'm trying to think of how to phrase this question uh forget about that question but I'm like oh it's a hard transition in a way but i want to talk about um what you're currently doing right now yeah uh, like because you uh um, have gotten a position as a pediatric nurse correct per diem yeah. But I think when I messaged you about that, I was also a little bit confused because you always think of like, once you're out of like, after you graduate, it's always like a new grad position. Yeah. So when you said per diem, I was like, oh, like, how does that work? And can you like yeah. shed some light on that? Yeah, I mean, like, I'm, I'm still, um, as I'm doing this, still exploring other, um, you know, I'm still looking at new grad positions, not so much because I'm like, ecstatic, like, you know, if I get, I'm jumping ship, like, that's not really, it. like, no, I'm not really um, looking to jump ship at the current state of where things are with my situation right now. Like, I, you know, I've made the commitment here, you know, I'm going to, to commit to it, um, but more so just applying to a new grad position just for the experience of, of, of that, um, just because I think that I've learned a lot from each application that I've turned in. Um, even though it's a lot of work and, you know, of course we complain about all the time, like, oh my gosh, this application is so long, <laughs> but, uh, you know, you do learn a lot about yourself when you complete an application and that's something to gain. And so it is worth the time to do it. And that's why, you know, I apply to positions that I'm interested in, uh, not necessarily applying just for the, just for the sake of applying to a place. If I don't, you know, if you don't see yourself really working in a place there's plenty of other positions you could apply to that you know, you're, you want to divert your time to the thing that matters to you rather than just submitting a visit, uh, an application because it's a new grad program. But um, yeah, like on paper, my position is per diem. Um, that was what I was offered. And, uh, that's kind of how they start people off at, at, the, at the hospital that I'm working at. Um, and, you know, depending on need, um, then there's a potential to transition to full time. But I think something that um, people don't necessarily understand is 
per diem just really means that you can work as little or as much as you want. Um, there's like a certain minimum, depending on what facility, you know, per, per diem is different, like for each hospital, some per diem is honestly closer to full time than not. And so that's the, the upside is the flexibility, you know, you kind of work based on your availability or what you choose to and you can pick up shifts um, for people. Um, but it's, you know, quote unquote risky because you don't have such a like, let's say no one's taking off work and there's no availabilities for you, which it's kind of rare. Like people are always taking off time. Yeah. Um, so there's always opportunities to pick up. Like I looked at, I remember my first day and I went in and looked at the, the um, open shifts sheet, like shifts to pick up. And I was like, this thing is like dang near full. <laughs> <laughs> like there's a lot, like I'm not, I'm not off orientation, so I can't pick up the shifts, but like mm -hmm. it's, you know, people are trying to take time off. Um, now or never, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and so I think that that's a misconception is, you know, people and you know, the downside, the downside of, uh, working for DM is you don't get the benefits. Mm, yes. Um, but luckily for me, you know, I'm fortunate to be in a situation where I I'm able to use my, um, my parents' benefits, which, um, are, you know, good and I'm okay with that. And I can use that for, um, for some more time. Um, and so that's not really a, a part and so i get to do the the per diem thing but i'm also part of it is also i like i personally like the the challenge and the the alternate like tried and true a year or two residency in any acute care and then you can you know whether it's out of state or wherever and then you come back to the bay area if you want to is typically what people do right and a lot of people do it for me it was like I was in a, in a situation where I was like, yeah, that's what I could do. But I was like, I kind of want to, you know, I kind of want to get this straight. This is, this, this seems fun. <laughs> yeah. And especially when it, you know, when I'm working at where I did my capstone. So I'm kind of familiar with the, the place and I, I had a good experience during my capstone. So I had no qualms about, about coming back because I actually kind of missed this place. I, I wanted to come back um, and it sucked to, you know, kind of have that time cut short. But I think that, you know, again, for me, it's like the right fit um, mattered a lot and not knowing how things were going to be um, going to someplace else and, and to have a place where, you know, I kind of have an idea of how, how things are. No place is perfect, of course, but it's like, you know what, this, I, can, I can work with this if this is what, you know, how things are for the next um, who knows how long. You know, I, I can make yeah. this work as I as I get my foot in, and you know, I think that there's an overemphasis on acute care, um, and not not that the place I'm at isn't acute, but it's more of a subacute um, type of situation. But like, you know, they do have acute care there as well, and I think that the stereotypical acute care is kind of where the emphasis is for new grads, mm -hmm. and it kind of limits people a lot because there's a lot of people who go through nursing school and they're not looking to work in the hospital setting um i've talked to some friends who are like i really don't want to be a floor nurse the rest of my life and so my answer to them is just so why are you looking at a new grad floor that's nurse true position? that's true if this is that's really true. not where you're looking to be you can be a nurse in another capacity and i think that there's a lot of nurses out there who are trying to get the word out that, you know, acute care is not the end all be all. It's important, you know, don't get me wrong. Um, but it's not necessarily where you, it's not a do or die thing. Like if mm -hmm. you don't do acute yeah. care, you're not going to be a nurse. You know, there's like, there's so many other nursing um, job opportunities that you can do with, a, with an RN license. And so, yeah, I'm just, you know, for me, it's like putting my money where my mouth is, you know, taking this quote unquote, like non-traditional route. It's maybe not as popular for new grads. Maybe this is something that people will do after they've been somewhere else or whatever, whatever it is. Right. But this is, you know, I'm happy here. And I think that's the, the most important thing is being able to, to be in a place where I'm like, yeah, like mentally, emotionally and physically, like I'm sound here. And this is going to be a good place to really you know, nurture my early career 
I think that's important for sure. Yeah. And I'm happy that you found that. Like, you know, yeah, I'm lucky <laughs> through, the, through this difficult journey that you've just described with all the job hunting, the interviews, everything. I'm glad that you, you know, finally found or you're still finding it technically, but you found something that you're truly enjoying and passionate about. And what was that first day like? Because I know it was this past Saturday. I want to know about yeah. that. dude. That's like that's that's a big thing. That's a big deal, right? Yeah. I mean, I think I think because I did my capstone here, first day wasn't as overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um like you know i geographically i kind of know my way around the place it's not it's not big so um you know i kind of know my my way around it and you know i know some some people who work there so it's nice to see some friendly faces and like hey i was just here you know not too long ago and here i am again um and you know i only took on one patient that first day so it wasn't too bad i did a lot of fall, you know, following um, my preceptor and just picking up things learning learning from her how she did you know learning hospital policy and um how they did how they do things and really picking up that flow um second day was much busier with two patients and really being on trying to be on top of my stuff um and then like my my third day yes yesterday where like i came home and i just knocked out <laughs> after work because i took three and it was like it was busy and i was like really close to like staying way over doing charting and stuff um and then you know fourth shift will be will be uh in two days with with four so it's you know each shift ramping up um more and more um with more patience but i'm i'm excited because you know each facility does things differently and to see, to just be a part of that process as I have, you know, friends who are going through their new grad programs or just RN jobs, um, that everyone's kind of doing the thing together is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's, it's just a grind. It's just, it's just a grind to, to pick up and, and really learn those things. Cause it's so, it's so different from how things were in, in nursing school and clinical, just because you don't have a license to protect mm -hmm. yeah. at that point. I mean, kind of because you know you don't you can't really be no, no, major you, mistakes in oh for sure yeah but like you, the major responsibilities don't necessarily fall on you yet and now it's like wow uh very soon you're going to be left alone and you want to take all the time you can to, to pick that up and of course you know more clinicals so to mm -hmm. speak rather yeah. than just once a week i think helps you pick it up more too and was it what you expected? Because I know I have my assumptions or kind of my vision of what it would be like once I'm finally kind of on my own or, you know, with the preceptor. Was it kind of what you expected going into the job or was it like something that was completely different? You felt, you know, was it was it different or the same? I think I think it was it's like the answer is yes and no. You know, like some things are as you expect and some things really just aren't. Um I think that there's unpredictable things all the time. And I think one thing that became kind of apparent for me was like, man, my like physical skills kind of got a little rusty in the mm -hmm. time that I've been out of school, um, which is kind of funny, but it's, you know, you, you, you do pick those things up. Like day one, I was like, man, I am rusty. <laughs> and going to a tubing feed and just going like, wait, hold on. How do we get, you know, and like making sure to, to hook things up properly. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a bit of a, a shock because you, you don't realize that even just a couple months being off of doing anything like really nursing, you kind of have to physically pick that up again. Um, but overall, I think it's, it's a lot more learning than you expect. You know, I think mm -hmm. the idea is, oh, as soon as I'm out of school, yeah, my get my NCLEX and then I'll be able to just hit the ground running and you kind of hit the ground with almost a bit of a limp and you're kind of figuring figuring things out learning charted learning assessment you know re relearning the assessments almost to figure out what the goals and expectations are at your particular facility um, especially for the people who are at big facilities you know if you haven't had that experience in, in nursing school 
then it can be a bit of a shocker. Like some of my friends are like, man, I stay out like an, at least an hour after just charting because there's just so much to do. <laughs> you know, like that's that's and not not getting paid for that hour. You know, like <laughs> like that's kind of the the reality of things. But I, that's why I think that's also why. I say, you know, find a place that really helps you learn and keeps you mentally sane. Because if you have to stay an hour after to to do work at a place that isn't you know, conducive to your fostering your career, that's got to be a long, you know, year. Um, if you're, you know, if if you only have to be there, that's gonna be a long year. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Or two years or, or whatever. So finding a place that, you know, because no place is perfect, but if you can find a place that you do enjoy being at, those, you know, cons of being at the place, I think, get minimized mm -hmm. um, a lot. And do you feel like, you know, what you're doing now? Because you described how busy you were, right? So do you feel like what, um, you're kind of, perspective or values of why you chose nursing do you think those align with with the work you're doing right now or do you feel like it's difficult because you're a little too busy to maybe do the things that you know got you into nursing in the first place yeah no i i, I don't think so i think that my my principles my goals my vision for nursing my passion for nursing i think has been maintained um i think for me that's I think it's going to be hard for me to, to let go of that just because it's so personal for me. Um, I, I can definitely see how it can kind of, then that's why, you know, seeing how it can really like, man, if you're not careful, you could burn out and Scary. lose your passion for nursing. Yeah. That's why I'm, that's why I'm really emphasizing for people. Like if you can, cause every person's financial situation is different. If you can try and find the right fit. You know, really give give the places that are right for you um, a solid, solid try before you start jumping ship and going. I just need to get you know any any job at this point so I can get my foot in the door and I can quick quick you know more quickly uh, transition to where I want to be. Sure, but um, for me, yeah, no, I mean like I'm I'm working as a nurse in a place that is very supportive of my goals uh, as a nurse you know uh, having a chief nursing off uh director the director of nursing that's very receptive to um concerns and being able to have those conversations um i think is key to uh my early growth here and of course i because i just started it's hard to tell where things are gonna go so maybe check in in a month, month <laughs> or two or six months uh, to a year from now and we'll see we'll see where i'm at that night <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, like I think I think just I think it's uh it's a little hard to just lose that right out the gate, especially just starting, but it's also very easy to mm -hmm. um if you're not careful. Yeah. The reason why I asked that is because I think that's also a personal fear that I have because I remember kind of just comparing my time in sophomore two, although it was cut short in med surge versus my time right now in um mental health and you know community health i felt like at times you know during med surge when i was doing those fully catheters or wound care like i loved it but i sometimes felt like i was disconnected from the patient like i i went into nursing because i wanted that you know personal touch that you know um that true bond that a patient and nurse can have but i felt like i was disconnected just focusing on the actual medical tasks but then going into community and mental health nursing and being at a facility outside of a hospital, I found, I kind of got back in touch with why I got into nursing. I truly felt like, you know, kind of um, taking a break from doing, I guess, quote unquote, hospital stuff, like what yeah. you typically see in a hospital and just simply talking with the patient, doing simple stuff like coloring with the patient. I felt like I truly got in back in touch with why I'm doing nursing. And yeah. I'm kind of scared that, if I go back into a hospital, I might not like it because I don't get the same, I guess, quality or amount of time with the patients compared to in the community setting. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's why I say you knowing yourself, that introspection um, and that, you know, I think that comes more from just the rep from the repetition of doing these applications, you start to uh, subconsciously almost 
learn things about yourself because you'll notice there's certain things that you write more and more about. Like for me, you know, I'm really passionate about that patient centered care, like pay, the patients direct the care. And I started to notice like, wow, on almost all of my applications, like that's what shows up. Like I'm writing about patient centered care. I'm writing about being a patient advocate and like, this is what I'm passionate about. And so then when they ask you, you know, when they ask me, they're like, tell us about yourself. And I'm like, I'm a patient, you know, I, I love to do, this is what I'm, this is why I'm passionate about nursing, my story, all that. And so, you know, if you're recognizing that early, great, like you're ahead of the game, um, really key into that, you know, for you, if, if that's what you value, um, you know, screw the, the stereotypes or the negative connotations around, you know, oh, you know, home health or community, you know, community and mental health nursing, like this isn't, you know, this is where, you know, nursing or whatever, whatever the stigma is, right? Like if that's what, you know, really lights your fire, that's where you need to be. Um, you know, there's a reason why some people, you know, why there's nurses who have been, you know, home health nurses, public health nurses, whatever they're doing, like these are areas that are, you know, not the most, and glamorous to, to new grads, right? Especially going through school, everyone wants the, the ICU and the, you know, the, the NICU and the PEDS and, and the med surgeon and all that, like that's what people want. But there's also a lot of these other specialties um, and so many more that aren't the most obvious that there's people who make this their career and there's a very good reason why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's what lights their fire. And so would you rather be in a position that maybe is a little more stigmatized than your run of the mill, you know, acute care, or would you rather buy into that and then be stuck in an acute care position that you're not necessarily the most excited about and then you burn out and mm -hmm. you quit after a couple of years and do something else completely yeah. unrelated to nursing, you know? Yeah. And I feel like it really did take me going through all this, this semester to kind of open my eyes up to the possibilities outside of the hospital setting and just kind of thinking about maybe my happiness in the long run. Cause I feel like yeah. if I ask someone like, Hey, so how are you doing? Like, how's your job? If I feel like if they respond with, Oh yeah, my job's good. Like, you know, it pays well, like this and that. I feel like now I'm kind of think like, are you really happy though? If the first thing you say about your job is just about pay, yeah. I feel like something yeah. should go on. Like, I love my job. Like, you know, yeah. it's, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm in, you know, like it's, it, it is also, it is also tough. Like I like, I really like and love where I'm at right now, but at the same time, you know, physically I am a bit tired. Um, not, not that I'm tired of work, but I'm just, you know, it is demanding, mm -hmm. um, you know, to, 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 to do this, but I choose to do it because a, I believe in what I'm doing. And also like, I enjoy what I'm doing. You know, this is, it's worth it for me. And if it was something that I didn't enjoy, I wouldn't be, you know, making the sacrifices to, to go and do that. Um, cause that just doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. Or if I did, then it's like, now I'm creating resentment for something that I'm kind of actively putting myself in, you know, you don't want to present the place that you're working at. Oh, um, yeah. because that, like, like if I, if I absolutely did not like, you know, pediatrics and I'm forcing myself into a, you know, pediatric nurse position because it, you know, because it's like, oh, that's what you, you have to do. Like, that doesn't make sense. I'd burn out in like mm -hmm. a day. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. I feel like that's something that I think is always taught, but you can't really internalize it until you kind of get more experience in nursing. Like you, freshman one, you can just be taught like, hey, you know, do what you love you know like don't just settle for less or don't settle for something that you're not happy with but you can always say that to a freshman one but that not that might not always click right away like that definitely didn't click with me because I always thought as a freshman even as a sophomore that like it's okay like I can do anything and I'll just get over it or I'll just you know push through it but sometimes it's not about pushing through it. it's about finding something that you actually want to fit into and be happy with so that you don't have to push as hard so that you can just rather than kind of overcoming burnout try to prevent burnout from happening in the first place exactly like and it's almost like the same as you know preventative care like do you want to treat the symptom or do you want to actually address the problem or even prevent the problem from happening in the first oh, place yeah. right 
So I think, and I think that's something that we don't talk about enough in nursing school. And I'm really lucky and fortunate to have had such a, you know, supportive um, group of, you know, instructors who, when I ask them about certain things, like they're able to, you know, give it to me straight and go, you know, you really got, you know, look for what, what are you, what are your goals? What are you really passionate about and go with that? Um, because, you know, nursing as a career, there's so much there and it's always there, you know, acute care is always going to be there. And it's not to, you know, put acute care down because acute care is great. Like there's a lot of people who absolutely love acute care. Great. You know, but that's not what this is about. This is if acute care is not for you, don't try and force yourself into it just because you feel like you need it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like there's so many people, like, like some of the nurses I talk to. Um, even some that are working there, they're like, yeah, I started out in like home health or in, um, you know, an a- a- agency that does this or, you know, sales or, or this and that. I was like, wow, I had no idea. There were so many other things you could do as a nurse, you know, as mm-hmm. a consultant, legal, so whatever, like, um, you know, aesthetic nursing. There's, there's so many other, other things that you can do. And maybe those things require you to have some acute care experience. But at least that's your goal. You're not doing the you're not doing the acute care because um, because you feel you have to do acute care. You're doing the acute care as a step to where you're trying to go. And I think that motivation makes it you know, quote, quote, like more bearable. Yeah. Um, right. Especially if that's not something you're passionate about. Mm-hmm. So I think that having that kind of game plan is is really important. And it's not to say you have to have a game plan, but just have an idea of like. What are you trying to even do? Like, why why nursing in the first place? Which is a hard question to to answer, you know, with only six, seven, four or six semesters of oh yeah of experience. And what advice do you have for people that don't even know what they want to do in nursing at all? Because I know there's a lot of people that have that plan right out of the gate, like, oh, I want to do peas, I want to do psych, I want to do ED. But how about for people like kind of like me, where you can see yourself in many different settings and is and when it comes time to senior year post grad like what advice can you give about trying to find you know yeah. what they want to be doing yeah i mean um speaking of, i think it's i think it's a little easy for me to talk about my opinion on that because i struggle with that all the time like i don't have a particular patient population that i'm like i have to only work with this like if you if i was an adult i would I would like it if I was in, you know, geriatrics, I would like it. If I was in, you know, older kids, I'd like it younger kids, like whatever, like you throw me wherever. Like I I've liked all my patient populations and I enjoy, you know, all of those, um, you know, there's, and I, I've also liked, you know, almost all of the units that I've had the, the pleasure of, of shadowing or experiencing. And so I guess the short answer is oftentimes you don't really get that choice. As a new grad, uh, yeah, true, like true, true. you might like all these units, but if they don't want you, you're not getting that interview. So, like, yeah, like I, I applied to a bunch of, like, different types of units. Like, I applied to med surge, I applied to neuro, I applied to IC, I applied L and D even. Like, I applied to wherever because I was like, I can see myself in this position, and so I'll apply for this position because I could see myself doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think the the biggest thing is just listen listen to your heart and really go with your gut feeling and go with things that you know light that fire for you especially if you're someone who can't decide on just one why do you have to only apply to ed positions Mm -hmm. or med surge positions if you're interested in more than one apply to more than one like it doesn't it doesn't hurt to try and you never know if something sticks that you know and i wish i wish i had a better story of oh yeah like I, I kind of wanted to go on this route and then I went on this and I only got interviews for this. And so I went with that and now here I am and I actually like it more than I thought I did. Like, I don't have that story, but you know, we know plenty of people who have had that story and that's why it's I think important to, to stay open and to not um, like, don't sell yourself short in, in the sense of like, don't just cut off all of your um, potential opportunities because of stigma or because you are scared or or not sure you know just mm-hmm. if that's yeah. something you're interested in just go for it like why why do you have to be afraid of of 
a particular position just because everyone says you have to do med search first or a cute kit first. Yeah, I like that point where kind of you have to really go for it and, you know, fear shouldn't be the thing that's holding you back. Because I can imagine a lot of people uh, being scared to apply for a specific type of nursing or specific place. Because like, oh, no, what if I, you know, get into the new grad program and I don't like it and it's going to waste my time. But I think, you know, being open minded and realizing that no matter whether, you, you know, you like it or not at the unit, that's never going to be a waste of time. I yeah. think you're always going to learn something that you can carry on to the next job you go to. Yeah. And not just that, but also don't like at the same time, don't be applying to places um, just for the sake of applying to a place. Cause you're like, Oh, this is med search. I should just apply it to acute care when you like absolutely wouldn't like, if you know, deep down, like some, some people just know, right. They just know like med search isn't for them. Uh, ICU is not for them. Neuro is not for them. ED, whatever it is like, if that's not your bread and butter, if that's not your cup of tea, don't go for it. Then you're, you know, you're isolating yourself in a situation that's not um, ideal for you or even taking the time to go through answering these questions and trying to come off as someone who's really passionate about a unit when you're really not. Mm -hmm. I think that messes with you. Like there's so many applications to fill out. Don't fill out the ones that you have absolutely no interest in. Mm-hmm. If, but at the same time, if there's even uh, a potential interest, apply for it. And if that changes, you can always say no. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Like I've, I've applied to places where when it came time to like go further in the process, I was just like, you know what? I'm really not feeling this anymore. I'm going to just withdraw my application. That's that's happened too. Um, but at the, you know, at the moment, it, it felt like a good idea. So mm-hmm. I think that, you know, you just got to you just got to take what comes to you. Yeah. And it goes the other way, like you said, about like the potential interest, like don't um, if there's like even a little bit of a spark, I feel like you should pursue it because just because you might not like it as much now, you might get into it and find that that might be your passion. You really never know until you try it. Right. Yeah. Or you might find that something else is your passion as a result of doing that. Right. Like you, you really never know. I think the tricky thing is there's no one answer for how to go about things as a new grad other than you need your end class. (laughs) <laughs> like it really just comes out that you need your NCLEX and if you have time do your certifications mm-hmm. because a lot of even if they don't require it it might give you a leg up like having your ACLS and PALS helps a lot with a lot of these applications and even if they don't outright require it they likely will by a certain date like and if you don't have it by a certain date like you won't be able to interview and there's a lot of waiting time too like immediately after graduation I, I waited almost two months to get my ATT uh, my authorization to test um, to be able to even register for the NCLEX. And then I had to wait another like month to take the NCLEX. But, you know, so that's like three months from grad, I guess, yeah, al- almost three months from graduation that, um, and it was close to like two and a half. But anyways, like almost three months from graduation before even, you know, getting the NCLEX. So with all, all the time, you know, getting getting my ACLS, getting those certifications done, like really did help a lot. Because um, now I no longer have to stress about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, you don't have to go crazy and like do it in January. Like, I know some people did all their certifications in January. It was like great, but now those expire a little sooner. Like I was, you know, I just you just do them when you do them when you do them when um, whatever works for you. But it does it does help for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm super glad that you were able to you know find that path and route for yourself rather than yeah. maybe just following what everybody else was saying of course you're you know hearing everybody's perspectives and like getting that advice from those experienced nurses and clinical instructors and professors but i'm really glad it sounds like that you're not just following maybe the quote-unquote typical path that nursing students do and i really enjoy yeah. hearing your perspective because i've i hope that the viewers learned a lot i've definitely learned a lot yeah. and like gained a new perspective of this whole journey yeah and like my my stance is just if if you know going into acute care is what you want to do then go ahead and do that like i'm not saying don't do acute care i'm just saying it do it because that's what you want to do rather than that's what people are saying you should do um because i think just and you know who knows where where this where this path is going to take like i might pick up some odd or whatever i don't know like or maybe as a per diem i'm going to be working like a full-time schedule there's that too and 
you know, you, you never really, really know what's going to happen. But I think that um, giving yourself the best chance, you know, pursuing the things you want to pursue is more important than following this regimen of that, you know, you do the acute mm -hmm. care and then you advance and then you go to more acute care and then you do, you know, there's, there, there's plenty of people who do do that. And if that's what you want to do, please go for it. Mm -hmm. But listen to yourself, listen to, uh, listen to those who you know, care about you, who, who know you, like, to really figure that out. And it's a struggle. Like, there's people who are still now um, trying to figure out the next step, and that's okay, too. Um, but I think it's more, like, it, it's not worth it to put unnecessary pressure on yourself to try and, like, follow the crowd. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah like it's 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 a stressful enough process mm -hmm. minimizing as much of that as possible i think is important yeah and shout out to you and all the recent new graduates for doing all this during a pandemic because it, the yeah. i because yeah, everything's already tough enough like nursing school and everything beyond is already tough enough like without a uh you know a worldwide pandemic but you were able to do all this juggle you know i'm sure the environmental and external personal stressors that come along with the pandemic but then you know on top of that just the stress of all the applications so props to you and everybody i mean shout out you know props to the nurses uh, who have been working through the pandemic oh, and yeah. shout out to the students too like what you guys are doing right now is incredibly difficult i think like doing you know remote nursing education remote sim um some people who are going into um the the clinical setting um risking you know exposure and like maybe not getting as much experience as they would like because you know not clinical hours are being cut short and supplemented with sim so you're not getting you know full experience you're getting some experience i think it's just like what everyone's doing you know props to everybody for making the best of it um, and that's what, you know, you do as a nurse, you, know, you, you adapt to your situation, right? But I think, yeah, like, you know, you, you just, just like, just like nursing school, pretty much post-grad, uh, the post-grad grind and life is pretty much more or less the same. You take what you're, what you're thrown and you, you roll with it. And I'm, I'm glad to see like a lot of people in my cohort have been hired or in the process of getting hired for, for places. And that's really exciting to see that people are either whether it's within the Bay Area or beyond the Bay Area. Um, getting that experience in, I think is really exciting. Yeah. And maybe as a closing statement, do you have any advice for our, us students, the freshmen, the sophomores, the junior seniors, like going through this crazy, you know, time? Like, do you have any advice for us of how we can kind of keep our heads up and get through the slums because I definitely know I'm in a slum. Like what else? Yeah. I, I think my biggest advice is pretty much the same for anyone at any stage is just stay true to yourself and do things at your pace. You know, the moment you start like comparing yourself to other people is difficult enough. Um, especially it was like people compare all the time. And so if you tack on your own comparison on top of that, it's just too much. Like as a freshman, you know, pursue the things you're passionate about and try to do your best with, you know, all that you're throwing. Like being a, I think freshman year is tough, like maybe even tougher than some of the other semesters because you don't really know if you're doing, if you want to do nursing yet. Or if you're not in nursing, you know, you don't, you know, maybe you know what exactly what you're doing, but oftentimes people don't. It's, it's a, it's a new experience. College is a new experience, especially starting it in the middle of a global pandemic. Shout um, out to them. Yeah, and like, it, it it's a it's a huge major you know growth period, right? As a young adult, so you know, comparing yourself to other people doesn't make sense because other people are also figuring it out and recognizing that other people are also figuring it out. I think mm -hmm. is important. And then like as a sophomore, finally getting your your feet wet, you know, taking the time to really pay attention in in your in your clinical settings and like trying to get as many you know, being aggressive with um the time that you have especially if it's limited um with, with COVID, you know not getting as many clinical hours whatever you do have making the most of that and because you know in my interviews i've definitely drawn from stories back dating back to sophomore year um 
and then like juniors and and seniors um you know especially juniors you know in that in that grind like community health it's different and then going back to to med surge again is also is also different um but like i think eyes on the prize you know what is your goal why are you doing nursing if nursing is not for you like if you if you're really not passionate about it then don't spend two three years in nursing school or four years in nursing school and then decide that's yeah. not for you right um it's, it's kind of like sunk, sunk cost fallacy it's, it's tough but like you're looking at a lifetime of, of misery. And then like for the seniors, I think that, especially the graduating seniors, like having to, if you ha- like having to do HESI multiple times is tough. Um, it's mentally taxing. Um, it's very anxiety inducing. Um, and like, I, I took it three times and I was like, man, I don't know what I'm gonna do if I don't pass it other time. And I have friends who had to take it multiple times after and it's like, shout out to everyone for really getting through that that grind um it's not easy and you know it doesn't mean you're a bad nurse because you didn't pass it's just hesse's you know it is tough and different reasons for other people like i learned i have to read the questions oh my gosh four years of nursing school i have to read a test question right oh, yeah. um like actually read the question um but you know that's that's my you know, struggle so recognize that each person's you know dealing with something and so to to really like issue yourself like do it do it at your pace especially with you know having to do things virtually um and then recognizing that after graduation it's not all sunshine roses you got you know you know you have or sunshine rainbows or whatever the saying is you know yeah. you, you, there's a lot there's a lot to do post-grad as well and so the me- i think the mental aspect of it is is very important ultimately just you know happiness i think as much as you can find it is is extremely extremely important especially in the way things are in current day um trying to find a way to keep your head on straight i think is very important and that's that's the best advice i can give is if you're not having fun or if you're not happy doing what you're doing take a good look at why you're doing it and if yeah. and if the answer is because other people are doing it probably not the probably not the right reason mm-hmm. to do what you're doing wow thank you thank you again toby uh you know i'm 100 percent sure this is not going to be the last time that you'll be on this podcast it's not going to be the last time that people will you know of in msns will hear from you and i really appreciate that you took the time out of your you know your busy schedule of your new career to like be on this podcast oh, of again. course always yeah and shout out to anybody who stayed to the end of the podcast i think i might make that a regular thing shout them out love you guys <laughs> yes but you know thank you very much um you know make sure to like and subscribe all that good jazz but yeah thank you <laughs>